Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. This digital era is introducing a new challenge that a majority of coaches, consultants, and entrepreneurs are not prepared for. Literally, every business owner should now become a content publisher or a media house. Now, as an entrepreneur, you have to embrace the role of a content publisher and a creator in order to remain competitive in a rapidly changing era. And in this podcast, I'm going to be walking you through why having a cross-platform uh, content strategy will actually replace single channel brands and how that content needs to be reaching fragmented audiences that will just help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I tell you this with utmost love and respect coming from my own podcast, which represents yet another channel that we're reaching out to our audiences. And with the power of unlimited reach comes an entirely new set of, um, you know, challenges of its own and also um, advantages, which actually make your business profitable and enjoyable. I mean, you don't need to sacrifice your income to do what you love. You literally can have both. And I'm going to walk you through how to actually maximize um, what you have, you know, throughout all the channels so that you can reach your audience and create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Let me tell you something. I mean, obviously, imagine when you would have started your business, um, I don't know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years ago, most businesses, you know, the people who needed to hear about what you do usually were locals, but we've become a global village. What are you doing as a business owner to actually reach out to the vast um, and fragmented audiences that we are actually capable to help and deliver value to? Now, if you back in the time wanted to even have a chance of being known anywhere outside of your area, your only option was to go to a, a TV station or a radio station or buy very, very expensive newspaper ads. And, you know, even making a phone call to a neighboring zip code or to a other country or long distance was so expensive. I remember growing up, my dad wouldn't allow us to make any calls to the next city because, um, and, you know, they would be much more expensive. Now, can you imagine if you were a business, you could only afford to call local numbers and also with the advent of mobile numbers, mobile numbers were actually expensive to ring out to. But nowadays, I think making a phone call is one of the cheapest things. Uh, creating a podcast like this is literally me sitting in front of my computer with a microphone and my girl, my my little girl's headphones on. And I'm speaking to you loud and clear as we uh, possibly can. I don't need to be uh, invited to Oprah's show. I don't need to be invited to a radio station. I don't need to go sit in front of a um, uh, studio audience in order for me to speak my value. I can literally do this on a Sunday afternoon and engage with my audience while giving them value. So you as a businessman right now, or you as a coach or a consultant, you know, you've got incredible access to a lot of people in the world. Every 7 billion of the living souls that are out there, you've got access to them cheaply without all the overheads that um, people of yesteryear used to have. All right. And, um, you know, today all coaches and consultants, you know, have incredible access to these people at such a cheap price. That if you told somebody who lived in 1995 about it, they'd laugh at you 
for being super crazy because nobody could fathom being able to actually just sit here and create content at scale like we're doing now. And the only thing you need to tap into this incredible power, well, obviously you need a website, social media profiles, and engaging content. So my theme for 2022 and the years moving forward and my wish for you is for you to be able to publish enough content for you to stay relevant because if you don't publish content moving forward you're gonna perish so publish and perish has always been synonymous with maybe professors or people that um you know in the academia but now it applies to every coach consultant and every business owner in all industries and any market size. If you don't publish content, you simply can't reach people. And, you know, there's a whole sea of me too people out there. How do you stay relevant if you're not actually being in front of your audience at any given moment? Now, you might say, oh, I don't need to do this. People already know, like, and trust my brand. Let me tell you something. Our brains don't know what is real and what is not. And our brains don't know what is digital or what is real life, okay? So social media and digital technology allow us to actually leverage this process a whole lot more. If you understand what I'm about to teach you right now, you will be head and shoulders above anybody else in your niche. Because if people read your blogs, they follow your tweets and watch your online business uh, videos, or listen to your podcasts and they click through your slides and flick through your photos on social media, et cetera, et cetera. It's good as actually having them know you and them sitting face to face with you. And this is some really next level stuff because strangely, the human brain can't distinguish between digital media and real life, which is why we still sometimes feel very sad when a celebrity dies, even though we didn't even meet them because we feel like we've in invested our time with them. And now we actually know them as if they are a loved one or a loved family member. Did you, is there a celebrity that passed and then you actually felt really sad and you know, you felt tremendous loss just simply because this was somebody that you had gotten to know because you're following them and you're actually reading their stuff or you are, um, you know, watching them constantly. So in the same way, um, you know, how celebrity endorsements are actually effective because there's what's called the seven hour rule. And I'm going to walk you through what this seven hour rule is. You know, when you're seeing someone familiar who maybe you've, you know, most likely... Uh, spent seven hours watching or reading or learning about or listening to, if they recommend a product, you feel like they're specifically talking to you because you now your brain thinks you have had some intimate uh, connection with this person. Okay. And companies use, um, you know, celebrity endorsements because we've been watching, um, you know, you know, o o Schwarzenegger on, 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 on a movie. We've been watching uh, D Dwayne Johnson, you know, all those people, even celebrities like Elon Musk or uh, Jeff Bezos. We're constantly watching them. And now we feel like we know them. And if they present a new product, um, you know, in the marketplace, guess what? We don't doubt them because our brains feel like we already have a relationship with them. And you can literally take advantage of that phenomenon. And one of the reasons why I do these podcasts and I write books and I write blogs is because they go out and build relationships with people at scale that I could never accomplish on my own. If I do this podcast right now, it usually gets thousands and thousands of you know, uh, downloads and I don't need to be there physically with that person, but you're listening to this right now. Um, it depends on what you're doing. Maybe you are, uh, you know, walking your dog or you just exercising or something like that. We are creating a bond, a relationship in your brain right now feels like they know who Prosper Tarovinga is. Maybe you should send me back an email so that I get to know you too and I can get to celebrate your successes because I know you're not just listening to this podcast for your own entertainment. You're here to learn so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. 
So that's the reason why I do this, because this is creating relationships at scale. So, you know, I've seen some people tweet, oh, I'm curled up, um, you know, in bed with, um, you know, Prosper Tarwinga, and I'm sitting on the beach enjoying, um, you know, listening to this podcast uh, from Prosper Tarwinga, and this is what I've learned. Of course, they're listening to my content, but it feels more personal to them because it's only me and you. Right now, you, baby, just you and I. So at the end of the day, you feel like you know, like, and trust that person. And it feels real because your brain is interacting and is re accepting, acknowledging, you know, going through the same motions and feelings and, and, and you know, um, um, aspirations that I also have for you, et cetera, et cetera. And places like Google, it looks at it in another way. And they actually call it zero moments of truth, Z-M-O-T, zero moments of truth, which is another name for various data points that a person might find about you as they're making their purchase decision. And, you know, Google has made a research that it takes an average 11 zero moments of truth or touches in order to build up trust with someone. So they also advocate that, a lot of these touch points can be found online and as digital content. So you should have at least seven hours or 11 touches of relationship building content at your disposal in your business at any given moment. So this could be articles, podcasts, videos, apps, questionnaires, reports, illustrations, books, case studies, and events. All of it counts towards hitting the mark. All right. So I want you to try out the seven hour rule in your own business and see how life is going to get easier for you because people are not going to come to you asking you all those frequently asked questions because you know what, you've already covered them in your content. And if you experience um, what I have, you will find that you don't even need to start pushing for sales. You know, you actually get better joint ventures and partnerships and you have more fun too. You know, all spending quality time with people because you've created the content already, all right? So like I said, a lot of people are now facing um, this predicament because they haven't been prepared for it. As a coach or a consultant, you need to embrace the role of being a content publisher and creator in order for you to stay relevant in the rapidly changing area. And like I gave an example earlier that people 25 years ago, they couldn't imagine the simplicity that we now have and the access that we now have to create, um, you know, cheap content. And they would literally um, be, uh, you know, floored by the fact that some people are not doing this. People in this day and age, you know, it's like 10 year old me is going to be so mad knowing that right now I can afford all the candy in the candy shop, but I'm not buying any. You know, people that were doing business earlier, they had to write letters, they had to phone, all of those things. They didn't have the technology that we have now. But now that we do, what are we doing in order for us to reach unlimited audiences that are fragmented and in different uh, places in the world right now? Because remember, not everyone is going to be your customer, but you have to constantly be producing content, which then helps people to get resonated with you. And with the power of unlimited reach, it also comes an entirely new set of problems. Now, let me say this before the digital age, you know, there, there was one distinct advantage, you know, as a local business, you could operate in your own little bubble, you know, there was an ex expectation, you know, to produce you know, there wasn't a, any expectation for you to produce a bunch of content. People already knew who you were. And competition was limited to the handful of people around you. That's why in the English setup, people have, you know, names that denote uh, their job description. You know, you have people like um, Smith. You have people that, um, you know, that was the job that they were doing, you know, because they were blacksmith. You have people like Baker. You have people like, you know, any job. Your name would, um, you know, be represented by what it is that you're doing there, you know. Now, there was no competition and, you know, the people that are around you already knew about you and that's where word of mouth used to work. 
you know, so most of the time, as long as you had a listing and maybe a local phone book, you, you'd at least get a few phone calls from the people. If you were a plumber or whatever job you were doing right there, and you'd have a shot at getting a customer because obviously people already knew who you were and, um, you know, you were local to them. You know, now it's not just your immediate competitors, um, competition that you have to worry about. You also have got to contend with the expectations from all the other industries that your customers patronize. So it just so happens, you know, because other unrelated businesses are forced to set up their digital content game in order for them to be competitive. So your customers are paying attention to somebody right now. And if they're not paying attention to you, it could be your competition. And customers get used to the conveniences of, of research and buying decisions that are made based on what other industries are doing. So if the car industry is walking people through, um, you know, a test drive, a virtual test drive, what are you as a coach, consultant, or small business owner doing in order to give that convenience again to people. Remember, the world has totally changed now. You know, people need access to that information and content before they can make a buying decision. And they're not going to give you audience or they're not going to uh, give attention to your staff, no matter how good your content is, if you're not, um, you know, being of value to them at first, you know. You know, if I'm used to being able to look up information about topics and, and gaining easy access to critical information without having to talk to someone, that becomes how I judge the quality of any other business after that. You know, look at um, how your, because I assume you already know who your target market is. Where, if they're buying cars from Rolls Royce, look at what Rolls Royce is doing in order to um, give value and content out there. And if you're not doing the same, then obviously you're missing out on what your clients already expect just simply because that's what, you know, other companies they're buying from are actually doing. So let's say, let's give an example that's easy here. Let's say you run a restaurant, but your menu isn't as easy to find or access you know my first impression is to be incredibly frustrated and wonder why you can't even afford to provide you know the best basic feature um that other websites have have you ever seen when you go to fast food restaurants the picture is really big to to give you the impression that the portion that you're going to get is going to be a big one as well all right so here's the deal you're only judged by the expectations set by how your competitors do business and you're judged by the digital expectations and experiences that all other industries set as being the normal way. So look around you, see what your other people, where do your customers go after they've bought from you or before they've bought from you? Because if you ignore this, ignore this at your own peril, ignoring this means you know the re result is simple you lose out on a huge chunk on your potential customers for you know causes you can't even properly identify because you know it's not immediately related to your actual product or service quality people are now just used to having all the convenience of information at their fingertips and if you're not providing that grand opening grand closing so ignoring the the importance of content leaves your business incredibly vulnerable and the major two uh risks that are at play when when we're, we're looking at this because the bigger tech-based companies you know such as wordpress facebook all of those all of those places they're giving out free content and information and our customers are just getting used to all of that and also we have new and direct competitors who are actually prioritizing digital communication. All the young people that are coming into your industry, they are mobile first. They're internet first. So what are we doing to counter that and be available where, um, you know, our audience is going to be? You know, in, in the first scenario that I mentioned where the bigger tech-based companies um, that are out there is... What what happens is these tech based companies they're basically marketing and generating their leads with um you know panache okay what they're doing is they're really going out there and giving more value and giving people trial periods and that's what our audience is now expecting 
So when they enter the market, what happens is, you know, all their promotional efforts will totally displace your business. You lose exposure and you could have potentially you the potential i mean exposure that you could have gotten uh naturally and this then creates you know a dependency on you to to go to places like facebook in order for your company to be seen and then at the end of the day what happens you start paying for ads so if you are not prioritizing you know having a digital experience um you know of your own content chances are you losing a lot of clients who are directly being uh, fished out by bigger um, companies that are already creating content out there. All right. And I know, I know why this is because this exactly happened when we helped a local roofing company start adopting, you know, a digital first um, approach in their marketing. You know, when they were working traditionally, you know, they had no chance of even creating any content. You know why? Because they're always on top of a roof. And what's more, they were being disrupted by a franchise who basically owned no, um, you know, experience within that industry. It was just somebody who had marketing prowess, all right? So you as a business owner, you must now have a skill of being a publisher and an operator, okay? Because if you're not putting content out there, the world has changed its paradigm shift. And obviously it's getting much more easier, um, you know, for competitors to get into the marketplace. And let me tell you something, world changing paradigm shifts are never convenient and there is no shortcut. So it's going to be a skill set that you need to learn. And it does take a lot of time for you to practice in order to be in front of a computer um, or in front of a mic like this and, and speed out your um, expertise. But you can always spot somebody who doesn't take time to learn a new skill because, you know, they've already given up and they're not getting any results. So if that's you and you you are looking to expand your business and get clients and grow, um, you know, profitably, I encourage you to actually really start taking, um, you know, creating content really seriously. Because the first step in solving the problem is knowing what the actual cause of the problem is. And we're now in an age with a massive disruption that is happening at the scale of un untold proportions, you know. The most valuable skill you can develop is to take advantage of the digital era and translating your expertise into value-driven content and learning how to maximize this internet, um, you know, leverage power. What you can do now is when you do a podcast like this, it can actually be transcribed into a blog or segments of it can actually be used as, you know, uh, small videos online in your social media. So you don't necessarily have to sacrifice your income to do what you love you literally can have both you know uh, we can walk you through a simple step-by-step -step, uh content strategy where you can actually start using the internet to its best um use so if you're a person that's saying that ah, you don't need to radically shift or you don't need to start jumping onto this content uh bandwagon I think you're living on borrowed time, my friend. Instead, I want you to take the mindset of diligently learning the craft of publishing, you know, um, you know, content creation. And I know it will pay massive dividends in the future because right now I've done, I've sat down and recorded this podcast and, and you only have to do it once. That's all that matters. And once it's done, guess what? You can now leverage this by um, repeating it to uh, people that haven't heard your, your, your content. And maybe you received this podcast through an email. You know, all of that, all those ways that we're using in order for us to reach our audiences. So don't, the biggest problem that a, a coaches, consultants, and uh, small business owners have is obscurity. And you can counter that obscurity by literally creating content um, that is relevant to your audience and continuously um, being of value out there because we get paid in direct proportion to the value that we bring to the marketplace, okay? So this is how you can literally compete as a business owner against the big players out there 
but you just chipping away and being relevant and being of value to your audience any moment that you can because if you're not then obviously um you know either you 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 publish or you perish and this is now you know a very big mantra that you literally should take on if you want a business that's profitable and enjoyable i literally want you to be successful and i want to show you how to get high ticket um leads on autopilot uh using our online prosperity blueprint so whatever information or whatever um context you got this podcast uh from reach out and book a consultation uh with me and i'll show you how you can leverage um today's internet um so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast man because we are always unleashing um um you know you know groundbreaking ideas as we are also utilizing them and this podcast is available daily uh so you better subscribe wherever you're listening from in the meantime i'll see you tomorrow or just uh schedule a call with me so that we uh can have a chat and let's see what your content strategy looks like bye for now thank you for joining us today If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So, look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.